the OST for Dodonpachi Dai Fukatsu, known in the U.S. as uh, Dodonpachi Resurrection, which is a pretty good translation for Dai Fukatsu. This is just awesome, awesome stuff here. Don, tell us which track you selected. I chose the uh, Dividing Road of Fate, which is a stage two theme. This is the obverse version, so it's the the I guess the first time you'd encounter this tune. Yep. And it's composed by Azusa Chiba, and this is actually the very first shooting game music she ever composed. Wow. So, so this is the first time Chiba comes on at, with Bass Escape to say, hey, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. both her and Kudo were very, very new to Bass Escape at this time. Wow, you know, it's really impressive knowing that fact. I mean, just, just listening to the song, and, and everyone can hear it. Like, right now, this is, this is really good. Like, this is really interesting stuff and it's it speaks to the quality of people that Sakimoto and crew were able to sort of scout out and bring into bass escape over the years and I'm glad I'm assuming Namiki was probably the one to sort of put together the cave teams yeah um, yeah he, he yeah he was always the sound director for the bass escape yeah so what when Namiki, it came to the soundtracks right when he, yeah so when Namiki said hey I think you guys you know Chiba and Kudo can start working on this stuff you know, I'd like your help on this. The Daifukatsu soundtrack, and, and some people would refer to this, by the way, as the Daifukatsu white label, because black label will come later. And we'll talk, the first black label we hit, we'll talk about the concept of black label and what that means uh, when we get there. But yeah, yeah. This, is a, this is a good track. Yeah, I think uh, Namiki wanted the soundtrack to be like the, the his realization of the ideal shooting game soundtrack. That's what he said in our interview. And once again, that's the 2011 interview with Manabu Namiki, which we have the link in the comments below. Now we're going to transition over to the song I selected. This is the stage five theme after you've gone through both versions of each well no no well well both versions of each stage in the game is like if you fulfill certain conditions right right like, you go one way or the other so this is the, the yeah so I'm saying the 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 last stage or yeah this is where it all combines and comes together and i assume you, this would be part of the route to like a true ending the stage five theme translated as the battle was just quote to continue that future the daifukatsu plotline for those who care has to do with time travel it's 2008 in tokyo the events of daiojo which is far in the future sends some bad things back into the past which is our present in 2008 or 2009 and so the battle was just to continue that future which future are they talking about the future of super mechanized insane warlike patterns or a more peaceful future you'll have to find out by playing the game the stage five theme i like every track on here this is just a solid soundtrack this is a really good one go ahead oh and i really like how they reference music in the earlier games in the series like the main melody in this and stage one since they share the same melody is actually from the stage one in don pachi Yes, that's right. Um, and then, and then, stage three and is also like stage three and six BGM from Dodon Pachi. So, I mean, they they put these musical references in there because it is like the rebirth of the series. Absolutely. And the Miki's always been intelligent about that. You know, I forgot to touch on the trivia about Daiojo, but that track list to Daiojo, there are ways to read the kanji that you would pronounce it. That they were sort of like puns, like homonyms towards other companies that have made shmups that Namiki respected, including uh, Iram. And Success. Success, and a, and a bunch of others. And it's like every stage name was named like that originally. It's a, it's a really interesting thing that he was capable of doing it. And then the translations, the meanings of those names still follow what Doranpachi is about. Like, like one's named like Red Bee. And like, if you know anything about Doranpachi, and the concept of the bees and the worker bees and there's hexagon honeycomb everywhere like that's just amazing work of language and that he can do that and that's just a very small side point of his main job which is to make good music it just shows how much care he puts into it yeah and when i think like his like kudos first game music role was also for the soundtrack and like it was a very difficult process i guess 
I mean, they were new. They hadn't composed for music like this before. And when they heard this stage playing now, like, he started crying because it was, like, light, transparent, and it captured the whole idea, the whole ordeal of working on that project for him. Wow. Is that also so, in the Namiki interview? No, that is in the uh, the game, this game side interview, uh, some Japanese publication, where they interview Base Escape all about their shooting scores. All right, Japanese good, interview. Is, yeah. that, is that listed as a resource on VGMDB? I think it's in the... Uh, someone listed it as a resource in one of the threads for the Ketsui bonus bundle edition that we'll be talking about later. Aha. Uh-huh. All right, very good. We've about talked our way through this song. I just want to mention one more thing about this soundtrack, which is the packaging, which is weird. The CD doesn't have a booklet. Almost all these has either a booklet or it folds out into a poster or something. This one is just six plastic squares, and they're so they're transparent plastic with ink printed on them, and so it creates this really interesting effect. In fact, the entire all packaging is transparent. If you could look real closely, you can see all the way through to the back through all the layers. So I find that very interesting. Now the next album we're going to be looking at, second album published in 2009, CVST 9. This is Manabu Namiki Selection Death Smiles Premium Arrange Album. This is the first of two Death Smiles Arrange Albums. This one is Namiki picks his favorite people to do the arrangements. The track that Don selected is the Stage B2, Witch of the Bottomless Swamp, and you're going to hear it straight from the beginning. Who did the arrangement on this one, Don? Uh, this was Yoshimi Kudo, so... He decided to take this gothic swing rock jazz thing and just transform the original into something that I don't think I've ever heard before in terms of a video game arrangement. All right, let's check it out. Yeah, uh, if nothing else, one has to say, uh, I, I don't know that I've ever heard anything like that before. It's a very interesting mix of genres, um, very enjoyable, and I'm impressed by it. All right, I'm going to move on to the track I selected from Namiki's selection, Death Smiles Premium Range Album. This is part two of Stage Extra, which is the Gorge stage if you've played the game. The song is called Memories of the Ruined Crystal Temple. This is, I love this song, and I love like every version of this song. It seems like nobody can make this song sound bad. I just think it always sounds awesome. The arrangement is by... Mitsuhiro Kaneda. Kaneda-san is another bass escaper, not featured as prominently as some of your other bass escape members throughout Cave's work, but I do really like his arrangement here. I'm going to let this song play a little longer. While it goes, I'm going to talk about the next album we're going to be covering. There's actually two albums released on the same day. This happens a few times. Cable will release multiple albums on the same day. May 16th, 2009, two albums come out simultaneously. One of them's really good and one of them, eh, not so much. 
the good one is the first in their CVAS lineup. This is where they start using a different prefix in their catalog numbers. CVAS001, an arranged album. Ketsui Kizuna Jigo Kutachi arranged album. So it's all Ketsui, and this is, I think, the first of their albums where the idea is kind of like the premium arrange albums of the early aughts, like uh, like Dark Chronicle premium arrange and Fantasy Star Online premium arrange, where the idea is one song, one prominently known composer doing the arrangement, which I love that format, and we're going to get a bunch of these. This is the first one where we really get that format happening. So this is an album for Ketsui, and we're going to start with the last track, which is a fine place to start. It's the ending theme called Last Words. The arrangement is by one of my absolute favorite. I mean, this guy's like a hero to me. Noriyuki Iwadari. And Don selected this song. Don, why'd you select it? <laughs> On the spot. Now, um, I just really like the combination of like synth, piano, and rock. And I think it, it was a good way. And it, it still captures that whole you've done it kind of vibe that the original gives. But making it kind of very Iwadari-like. Yeah. He starts it real slow, and then he lets it build, and it just turns into a really, I think, a really polished rock piece. And it's, you're, I think you're right. It is very celebratory. It feels good. So let's let that good feeling happen. this one play a little longer while I talk about my pick. I picked track 8, Evac Industry, which is cute. Evac is cave backwards. Uh, it's Evac Industry dash Judgment Day. It's the stage 5 theme. The arrangement you're going to hear is by Akari Kaida. Kaida-san, she worked with Capcom for a while, and she's just, she's a very interesting person, and she is featured on a number of these arranged albums, and I really like her work in pretty much all of them. Um, but I intentionally picked this one out because I really like what she does here. Take a listen. What do you think of Kaida's contribution on this one, Don? I, I enjoy it, but I also think it's one of the weaker arrangements. Really? I, yeah, I, I mean, like compared to what some of the other people do, I don't think she like changes it too much. But I do enjoy like the new synth that she gave it and the kind of like slightly jazzy flair she gives in the accompaniment. But I think there are better tracks on the hmm. but then again I'm also subconsciously comparing it to the evac industry on the definitive Ketsui album which is used for the 360 version of the game and that it can't compare that to anybody oh I see yeah I think what I like about this is she, you're right she doesn't do too many tweaks from the OST from 2003 but what she does do makes a big difference like the talking the 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 riding the hi hat on the drums, some of the synth swaps that she does on the melody, good stuff. Before we move on from this album, Don, why don't you name some of the other arrangers on this album? Because I think it's worth noting who some of these people are that start appearing on these albums. Okay, um, I would say that there's let's see, there's Wild Arms' favorite Michiko Naruke. Yep, and she appears on multiple. We'll see her more in the future. Now there's Bert. Everyone knows Bert. Yep, he's got. Well, yeah, we got a special surprise regarding Bert in a couple albums ahead. And let's see, there's Yak. Everyone Yak. Knows. Well, if y you're Yasuhisa fans, Watanabe. Uh... Yeah, if you like mm -hmm. Schmucks, you know Yak. 
Um, there's Koji Hayama. If you know Choaniki, you know, you know Choaniki. Yeah, if you know Choaniki, you know Koji Hayama. Then there's, you know, Wasi303, who works with INH and G-Rev. There's Ippo Yamada, who helped compose Mega Man 9 and 10. Yep. Hey, real quick, this was, I think this is Wasi303's first feature on a Cave album. I believe so. Well, I mean, not including his Ibar remix, but it's not. Right, on a Cave album, this is his first, yeah. So this is the first time we got to see him. All right, now we're going to move forward to... Like I said, if if Voice Bowl isn't the worst album, I think we have to say that this is. And let's face it, while you could potentially see lyrical vocals working for Cave if they took some of the source material and did something, maybe. But these image songs from Natsuko Naito, eh, not so much. So we're talking about Cave no Uta, the compilation image song album. So this is pulling the little vocal tracks from a lot of the games. It has a couple that you won't find on any other albums, and it has some remixes at the end, including the one you're hearing in the background right now, the Headbangs Heaven version of Mad Symphony Death Smiles, which was Don's pick. And Don, I'm going to try and put words in your mouth here and tell me if I got it right. You pick this one because it's the most listenable. <laughs> there's actually a quite a, there's a few on here that are very listenable, in my opinion. It's not the best album, but I chose this one, actually, because I like the remix more than the original. Yeah, absolutely. For the main reason that they also include part of Burning Halloween Town as an instrumental interlude. Yes, yes, they do. It's, it's an interesting mix. But I, I'll, like, when we get to the Arrange album for this... The, ch- the track that I chose is also quite listenable in its original form, which is the Ketsui image song. But yes, this is one of the more listenable ones. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. I'm going to skip ahead to the one I chose. This is the theme song for Pink Sweet's Eba Love Song, which um, on one hand I think is a crappy song, and on the other hand I think is ridiculously catchy, uh, which is a real problem for me. Um, it's like a guilty pleasure, but only in the sense of guilty that like the only person that would judge me is still just me. Like, I don't care if someone else heard me listening, but like... I'm ashamed to listen to it based on my own, like, musical elitism. But then I kind of, like, dig it anyway. Do you know what I mean, Don? Yeah, I have my guilty pleasures as well, but this is definitely not one of them. Interesting. So you don't like this one? No. No, Evil Love Song is not one of your faves. So this one's from Pink Sweets again. I'm not even going to give this one a crank up for you to hear. It's just going to be background music. But I did pick it because I kind of like it. There's a lot of songs on this disc, and some people do like the disc. And Don said, you know, he's right. There are a few good songs on here, but there's some weird stuff, too. (laughs) Uh, I should mention, though, and I forgot to mention this earlier, some albums do come with a DVD. The Moochie Moochie Pork album comes with a DVD of all Moochie Moochie Pork. I think there's a full playthrough on there. The Cave No Uta album comes with a DVD with tons of footage. You've seen a bunch of stuff in this video already of some of their other games. I was able to get that thanks to the footage from that DVD. So that's a great collector's item in the sense of you can see a lot of cool games on there. Stuff you cannot find in America. Can't even find it on the recent iOS releases. All right, I think that's all the more I can take from uh, Cave No Uta. I'll mention real quick, the catalog number on that is CVST 997. And that was the second album released in, on May 16th alongside the Ketsui Range album. Now we're moving to August 2009 for the Doranpachi Daiojo Arrange album. Um, this is another one where it's one arranger for one track. Um, we're starting with track seven, Mixed Melody Stage Four. I think this is, I think this is, is this the second time we're hearing this? No, but you'll hear it again in the future. This arrangement is by, oh, this is a Don's pick, and uh, I don't know if you picked it because of this, but it's as good a reason as any to pick it. This is the one time that our friend Kinuyo Yamashita is on a cave album. 
Yeah, I chose this for a couple reasons. One, I think it's my favorite range on the album. And secondly, when I had lunch with her, when I, when I guess when she first moved to the U.S. permanently, uh, she told me that this was the very first time she's ever arranged someone else's music. Wow. That's really amazing when you listen to it. And, like, first of all, it's quite different from the OST version, which would have been, like, six years prior to that on the first album we covered. Um, not only is it a fair bit different, but it's great to listen to. I think the director wanted to compose, uh, arrange it in the style of like Esper Dream. Which, for the record, is uh, my favorite of uh, her source compositions. You know, people mostly know Yamashita for the first Castlevania. When she appears at uh, festivals, people know that about her and celebrate that. And it's awesome that she's associated with that. But she's done a lot of small uh, and medium sized games in terms of notoriety. She did Mega Man X3. Um, she did, did she do, what was it, Power Blade? Um, which is a I pretty so. cool action platformer on the NES. She did a couple of NES and SNES games when she was still under Konami. And then, uh, she's gone on to do, uh, Metabots and a few other interesting titles in the 2000s. But this arrangement, um, I really enjoy it. And I'd really like to see Yamashita pulled in. If Cave ever does another arrange album in this style where it's like a premium arrange album, I hope they get her again. Now the track I selected off of the Diojo arrange album, I'm not even familiar with this person as a composer or an arranger. Yasuhiko Fukuda, I know nothing about. I picked this song. It's the opening track, Fog Warning, the select screen music. Just because I love the way this album opens. I love that you have this off and then on. Just those first eight measures are just beautiful. And I, I just think it's, it's a great way to get started for a really good album. And while we're listening to this in the background, Don, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this album in general. I've heard some people say, oh, they were really underwhelmed. You know, they think Cave could have done better. What are your thoughts on this album? Um, let's see. What are my thoughts on this album? He's got them in writing. You'll find it in the uh, show notes, or the notes below. We'll have a link to this review. Overall, I think it's it's a good sound, uh, like a, a range album, but I think some of the composers are a bit on the lacking side. Um, mainly Kikuta. I don't really enjoy his arrangement too much. Is that Grieving Womb that he did? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's, he's done some really good arrangements in the last five to ten years. Some really fun and surprising stuff. I don't think Grieving Womb is one of them, though. No. I like this one because... That mix of retro and rock, and I also love how it slows down, like it comes to a complete stop before kicking off again and adding the vocals. I like that, and the Nyak stage one is beautiful. I really think Takahashi's boss arrangement is amazing with his like crazy guitar opening and then the music box and rock mixture. Yeah, the good layers. Layers not just in terms of one audio track and another, but like layering styles and layering like moods and i then, think the like, best arrangements do that yeah and then of course there's the amazing ending arrangement by dreams nights into dreams composer tomoko sasaki oh yeah that that's a good one and like sakuraba's 
crazy orchestral arrangement with like out of tune violin. It, it's just chaotic, and I think it really works. So overall, I think this is a pretty successful album, but there are some underwhelming arrangements. All right, now man, this next album, I think this is like definitive. Like if you want a good cave album, if someone said to me, Patrick, I want one cave album in my collection. What should I go out and find? In terms of one quality and two availability because you will find this everywhere i'm serious you can get this album for 30 dollars if you try it's a two disc set of arranged music this is the mushihime sama double arrange album it came as a pack-in i believe with mushihime sama futari 1.5 on xbox 360 in japan right yes it came with the xbox port of that yeah so lots of people must have bought that because you can buy this used all over the place which again, cave, reprint either physically or digitally, you're sitting on money here. This is amazing music and not enough people know about it. Mushihime-sama is just starting to pick up in the US and Europe. People are starting to learn about this game. The music is awesome. So the Double Arrange album is like this. First disc, everything from the first game's OST, arranged in premium arranged style, one person per song. Disc two, same deal, but Mushihime-sama Futari. So it's like, it really is two arrange albums in one. It's an awesome thing. And it, it's the last album that they published in 2009, came out around Thanksgiving, and I just love it. We're going to do two songs from Futari, I think primarily because I think Don and I both leaned this way because the first Mushihime Sama has so many arrangements. Futari, this is the only place you're going to get it, so far anyway. And Don, you picked the stage four theme, Black Shell Beast King. Who arranged this and why'd you pick the song? I chose this song, which is arranged by Technouchi, because, I mean, I don't know if words can really describe how much I love this arrangement. I think if I only had one song to listen to for the rest of my life, it would still be this one. Wow. It's just so relaxing and peaceful and such a departure from the original. I know he is very, he's known for creating some very uh, controversial arrangements. I'm looking at you, Bloody Tears, which I absolutely love, but <laughs> it's, I absolutely love his arrangement, even though it really downplays everything that's popular about it. Yeah. But, I mean, I think Technology is just known for blasting you with walls of sound that just work so well together. Yeah. And, of course, when I talked with him this is his least favorite cave arrangement that he's ever done but to me it's the best so that's crazy and he's done so many i think this one is so good it's yeah, so he, it's subdued yeah. it's, this it's was incredible his, this was his third arrangement the first one of them was going to be like a disco y kind of style which would fit the original but he scrapped that and then another one he didn't like so he scrapped that but i'm glad this was the final because it still captures that energy because it keeps building as the arrangement goes on. But I don't know, it's just magical to me. you got that one in your head i'm gonna throw everyone out with one from left field this is the last boss music cry scream which really fits the villain this is arranged by ayako sasso who i just love this lady she is totally awesome and don i know you've met her she's uh she's affiliated with super sweep and she does just awesome in your face yeah. techno and she's also a, a stormtrooper <laughs> no, she, she really is when they do like events in Japan, she actually has a star uh, stormtrooper outfit. She has her own star uh, stormtrooper business card. Everything. Yeah. So I mean, you want to talk about a real like homegrown otaku? You know, this girl doesn't front. She's one of us, man. She's real. So I love her, and I love this arrangement. It's just fast paced in your face. It's the good stuff. Let's take a quick listen, and then we'll move forward. <laughs> 